Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well. So today I'll be solving some organic chemistry MCQs with you all and it's very important to do organic chemistry before appearing for any examination series because on average from this particular chapter you are tested with almost eight to five to eight MCQs, right? And um, this is this effectively makes a huge chunk of your MCQ paper. And the beauty of organic chemistry is that the chances of making a silly mistake in this particular chapter are near to zero. They are almost negligible versus in organic chemistry because there is no ifs and buts and exceptions and so on and so forth. So it's very easy to master this portion and every student should focus on organic chemistry as much as they are focusing on other chapters of your O-levels and IGCSE. Why? Because again, this will be a huge mistake on your part if you do not practice organic chemistry as much as it is required. Wired, right so without further ado and I'll also be posting these short videos onto YouTube so that I can help each and every student as much as possible um, and you know I could integrate or I could impart the thought process of solving MCQs in them right so I'll be posting time and time again till your um, MCQ paper right so without further ado let's just start um, this is the cover page of the worksheet that I've made so it has my face over it and yeah, let's just look at the first MCQ. So the first MCQ says, it says two structures of, the structures of two molecules X and Y are shown, right? So we, ha we can see this is my molecule X and that's my molecule Y, obviously. And right off the bat, what I can notice is this molecule X has a carbon-carbon double bond and this molecule X, uh, Y has a carbon-carbon double bond, which means that both these molecules belong to the same family, which is my alkene family, right? So the functional group is a carbon-carbon double bond. It's the carbon-carbon double bond right here. So that indicates that, okay, Okay, X and Y both belong to the alkene family. So they belong to the same homologous series, which in fact is the alkene family. And that's the question, that's what the question is requiring us to answer. It's saying which row describes X and Y? So it says, are they structural isomers? We'll look into this in a while, but do they belong to the same homologous series? Absolutely they do. Why? Because both have the carbon-carbon double bond. So both are alkene. So A and C are right off the bat wrong because they're saying, hey, they don't belong to the same homologous series, which is wrong. And now for them to be structural isomers, they must have the same molecular formula um, and a different structural formula. Now, what you can notice is without even naming them, you can notice that they have different structures. One is unbranched and the other one is branched, right? There's a clear branch that you could see. So they are, they are having a different structure but let's see whether they have the same molecular formula, right? They need to satisfy both the conditions. Now, if you check X out, how many carbons does it have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's essentially heptene, right? So if it's a seven carbon alkene, you know, you have seven carbons and hydrogens will be twice the number of that. Why? Because alkene's general formula is C and H2N. If you check Y out, how many carbons does Y have? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Sir, the molecular formula of this Y is C6H12. Molecule Y has a molecular formula of CH, C6H12, whereas X has a molecular formula of C7H14. So although they have different structures, but you can't call them isomers because the first condition is not even being fulfilled. Why? Because the first condition is that they must have the same molecular formula. So are they structural isomers? No, sir. Therefore, B is the correct option. That's how you need to go about MCQs. What is the structure of butanoic acid? Butanoic acid is a carboxylic acid with four carbons, right? And again, because it's a carboxylic acid, every carboxylic acid has the functional group COOH, right? Carbonyl carbon bonded to the OH, which is the carboxyl functional group. So C double bonded to O and then bonded to OH. I will check this out. A is my alcohol because it's only bonded to OH. B is my alcohol because there's the only OH functional group which is present. Now C can be my C can be my answer or D can also be my answer. Why? Because they both have the functional group group which is COOH but you need to check out the number of carbons right but means four so it must have four carbons C has one two three three carbons so that's propanoic acid and D is one two three four that's butanoic acid so D is the correct option why is C wrong because C um, is propanoic acid done 
Moving on, when a mixture of methane and chlorine is exposed to ultraviolet light, a reaction takes place. Well, let's draw the, let's write the reaction. So it's methane CH4 and saying it reacts it with chlorine. And when you expose it to ultraviolet light, what's going to happen is one chlorine atom is going to substitute the hydrogen in methane and the hydrogen which has been substituted will react with chlorine to give HCl, right? That's how the substitution reaction take place, takes place, right? So this goes here and this hydrogen goes back here. So you're going to get CH3 because now one hydrogen is gone and a chlorine atom is bonded so CH3Cl plus HCl will form right and we've done all the you know all the nitty-gitties of all of these reactions that this is a chain reaction can go on for as many as many times as you have the hydrogens and provided that you're adding excess chlorine right so this particular com product can further react with chlorine to give you CH2Cl2 plus HCl and then that CH2Cl2 plus HCl this CH2Cl2 can further react with chlorine to give you CHCl3 plus HCl so it can happen four times it's a chain reaction now it says it is an addition reaction no it's a substitution reaction right so let me write it down substitution reaction the ultraviolet light provides the activation energy absolutely because we know alkanes are generally unreactive and the reason why they're able to react and undergo the substitution reaction is because of the uv light the ultraviolet light provides it the minimum energy for it to undergo successful collisions so yes Two is correct. An equation for the reaction is shown. That's absolutely wrong. This is not the equation, right? Both the chlorine atoms cannot uh, substitute two hydrogen atoms at the same time. Why? Because this is not the fact, right? This is just an easy way to understand um, this particular uh, chemical reaction. You will get more insight on this when you go into A levels, right? So the reaction that take pla takes place is the mechanism for, for it is called free radical substitution, and that's not in your course. So what teachers do is, to simplify it, we just say, hey, one chlorine atom substitutes the hydrogen, and the hydrogen which is substituted reacts with this chlorine to form HCl. Both chlorine atoms cannot substitute both the hydrogen atoms at the same time. Remember, this is a confusion that remains, um, you know, with students, that haunts students, but when they go into A-levels, they understand why it's not possible. Part 4 says CH3Cl is made in the reaction. Absolutely it is. We've just made it, right? So 2 and 4 are correct. Therefore, um, D is the correct option. Moving on. Esters are formed when carboxylic acid react with alcohols. Beautiful, because we know whenever you have a carboxylic acid and whenever you have the alcohol, they can form ester if you provide it with conch sulfuric acid, so concentrated sulfuric acid, and heat it to like 200 degrees Celsius, right? It says, what is the catalyst? The catalyst is not aqueous potassium manganate. That is basically used in the oxidation of alcohol. It's an oxidizing agent. Iron is used in Haber process or Haber process. Vanadium pentoxide is used in contact process. So that's the Haber process. That's the contact process. And that's the oxidation of alcohols. And sulfuric acid is the correct option. The diagram shows part of a polymer. Um, okay, and it says which diagram shows the monomer from which this polymer, so it's basically an addition polymer that has formed and in order to identify the monomer for an addition polymer, we put a cut after every two carbons and between two cuts you're going to get your monomer, right? So put a cut after every two carbons, every two carbons, every two carbons in the straight chain. So these two carbons, these two carbons, you can take any two, right? So the monomers are same in this case. So between two cuts, I look at this particular, uh, I look at this particular part between two cuts, you have two carbons, right? And because it's an addition polymer, this bond right here and this bond right here no longer exists. So they're going to go back and form that double bond right here. So the monomer is going to look something like this. So this was the part which we cut. And now the carbon and carbon are going to form the double bond once again. So the monomer was basically my ethene molecule, right? And that's basically the polymer is polyethene. So A can't be the monomer, B can't be the monomer. The monomer must be an unsaturated uh, molecule, right? So um, A, B, and D are automatically wrong. Even if you did not know this A, B, and D are wrong, but this is so stupid that the examiner is giving you an O here where there is no, whereas there is no O in this particular structure. 
so stupid so c is the correct option in fact moving on nylon and pet polyethylene terephthalate are polymers which statement about these polymers are correct they both they are both condensation polymers yes they are condensation polymers why because a small molecule is removed or eliminated when these polymers form right and in both cases we've learned that h2o is the small molecule which is eliminated so yes they both are condensation polymers and they both are synthetic condensation polymers nylon is a polyamide and pet is a poly um, uh, polyester right now it says um, this particular structure right here, the structural formula is given and saying this structural formula could be the monomer for both polymers. Now, you know, the dude is just trying to confuse you guys by giving you so many CH2s. What he has done is he has basically given you a diol. How do I know? Basically, this is the box which we used to shade. So this box right here, sorry, my bad, this box, this particular part only, right? So this is the box that we used to share and we used to say, hey, it's a diol, right? So, but what he's done is he's enlarged this box. He's shown you that there are like three CH2 molecules in them. But who cares? We need to understand that it's a diol. Or if you were getting confused between them, you could also have drawn the structure and you would understand that it's a diol. It has an OH here, it's an OH here, and that's the box that we used to make. But in this case, to confuse you, the examiner has just, uh, you know, zoomed into that box and shown you that hey there are CH2, CH2, CH2s here. So it says can this be a monomer for both the polymers? Absolutely not. Why? Because for nylon the monomers are dicarboxylic acid and diamine. Right? And for polyester um, or in this case PET the monomers are basically your diol and dicarboxylic acid so that's for PET so carboxylic acid dicarboxylic acid could have been used for both but in this case we don't have a dicarboxylic acid we are given a diol now it says the complete combustion of both polymers give two products only dude are you okay combustion is the burning of any fuel Nylon and PET are not fuels, dude. So three is wrong. As, as far as O-levels and IGCC is concerned, you can even think about it from this perspective. It's very easy, you know. How can nylon and PET be combusted? They're not fuels. Fuels are the ones that you've studied. The alkanes, the alkenes, the alcohols, right? Those were your fuels. They aren't fuels. So one and um, only one is correct. Do we have only one as the option? Absolutely, we do. C is the correct option, right? Yeah. Ethane is used as a fuel. Which equation? So ethane is an alkane, which is C2H6, right? The number of hydrogens are twice the number of carbon plus 2. Eth means 2, right? So now it says which equation shows the complete combustion of ethane. Now, if you check C and D out, it's given you the formula of ethene, not of ethane. So C and D are automatically wrong. And now between A and B, let's check it out. So what's the difference? The only difference is in between. Oh. Pretty easy, guys. Pretty easy. It says the complete combustion, and here you're given carbon monoxide. So you don't even have to balance the equations. That's what I'm saying. It's very easy to solve questions by eliminating options. Right? Because in incomplete combustion, carbon monoxide forms. In complete combustion, carbon dioxide forms. Right? Now it says, which diagram shows the displayed formula for the named organic compound? So, uh, which named organic compound? Oh, okay. They're given. Sorry, they've given the names. I just woke up from my deep slumber. That's why you know the brain not working. Brain is not braining. But here you are given these names, and it says which formula suggests that the name and this structure are, um, you know, they they coincide with each other. Now, if you check ethene out, look at this. One, two, uh, three, uh, four, uh, five. This is a new type of chemistry in which carbon can make five bonds. So B is wrong because ethene should have the molecular formula C2H4. Here he's giving you the molecular formula C2H6, which is not even possible if there's a carbon-carbon double bond. So that's wrong. Ethanol. Now ethanol is what? It's C2H5. OH, right? That's CNH2N plus 1 OH. That's the formula, molecular formula of ethanol. So that's 
two carbons how many hydrogens do you have one two three four five beautiful and you have an oh you have an oh right here so c is the correct option we know if you check uh, d out d says methane meth means one carbon he is giving you two carbons here so d is wrong um if you check this particular <laughs> acid out it says this is ethanoic acid are you dumb ethanoic acid because it's an acid it should have the functional group of carbonyl carbon bonded to the OH which is the carboxyl functional group here he's bonded the C double bonded to O with an O and then bonded it again with an O and then with an H this where did this O come from right if this was the acid there should have been no O right here this carbonyl carbon should have directly bonded with the OH so A is also wrong I swear what is the total number of covalent bonds in a molecule of butane? Very easy, just draw the molecule of butane. That's meth, eth, prop, but, and draw all the hydrogens because it's a saturated hydrocarbon. Now, how many total bonds are there? Total covalent bonds? Let's count them out. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Boom, shakalaka last mcq from my side because i'll just be doing mcqs in batches of 10 right that's the only time i have propane reacts with chlorine in a substitution reaction so propane is c3 h h how much hydrogen should be twice the number of carbons plus two so six six plus two is eight so propane propane reacts with chlorine gives you c3 h7cl plus hcl that says which reaction condition is required for the reaction to occur well obviously it's a substitution reaction and the condition we need is an ultraviolet light why because the uv light will provide it the activation energy so you don't need an acid catalyst iron catalyst is in the harbor process temperature of 400 degrees celsius dude is just crazy you need ultraviolet light and that's pretty much it we're done with the first and mcqs hopefully I get the energy to keep on doing MCQs with you all and yeah, you guys can keep on solving them with me. Now, I'm going very, very slow about these MCQs because I want to make sure that I can, you know, I can left, uh, I can left Caro. I can make sure that I leave no stones unturned, right? So all your concepts are crystal clear. Okay, see you guys in the next bit. Bye-bye, ciao.